Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to talk about what it means for two matrices to be row equivalent. So in the last video, remember that we used these three operations for linear systems to construct these three analogous row operations for matrices. Now in this video, I'm going to introduce the notion of row equivalence for matrices, and we'll compare that to the notion of equivalence for linear systems. So recall that we said that two linear systems are equivalent if they have the same solution set. Now row equivalence is the analogous notion for matrices. We say that two matrices are row equivalent if there's a sequence of elementary row operations that transforms one matrix into the other. Now notice that there's no ambiguity in this definition, since any time we have a sequence of elementary row operations, r sub 1, r sub 2 up to r sub k, where this sequence of row operations transforms the matrix A into the matrix B, we can construct a new sequence of elementary row operations that transforms B into A. And we can do that by taking the reverse of each operation in the sequence and then flipping the order of the sequence so that the first operation in our new sequence is the reverse of the kth operation. After that, we would get the reverse of the k minus 1th operation. And this would continue all the way down until the last operation of our sequence would be the reverse of the r sub 1 row operation. And remember that since elementary row operations are always reversible, the reverse of each of these operations is again an elementary row operation. So this is in fact a sequence of elementary row operations. So for example, these two matrices, A and B, are row equivalent since we have this sequence of row operations that transforms the matrix A into the matrix B. The first row operation, R sub 1, interchanges the first and third rows of our matrix A, and by doing that we get this resulting matrix. Then the second row operation, R sub 2, will replace the second row of this matrix with the sum of itself and row 1. So we'll just add these terms for each column, and that will give us our new row 2, which is here. So this is the matrix we end up with. And then from there, we apply the last operation, r sub 3, where r sub 3 multiplies every term of the first row by negative 1 half, giving us this resulting matrix, which is equal to b. Now, since we have this sequence of row operations going this way, where we're transforming a into b, we know that there must be a sequence going the reverse way. So there must be a sequence that transforms b into a. So in our example, we can form this sequence that goes the opposite direction by starting with the matrix B and then applying the reverse of this R sub 3 operation, where we'll denote the reverse of that by R sub 3 inverse. Now since the row operation R sub 3 multiplied the first row here by negative 1 half, the reverse of that will multiply the first row in this matrix by the reciprocal of negative 1 half, which is negative 2. So the reverse of the R sub 3 operation will give us our new row 1 by multiplying every term of the first First row in this matrix by negative 2. And then when we do that, we'll get this matrix. Now from here, to get from this matrix to this matrix, we'll reply the reverse of the r sub 2 operation, where the reverse will be the elementary row operation that replaces the second row of this matrix with the sum of itself and negative 1 times the first row, and that will give us this matrix. And then finally, to go from this matrix to this matrix, we'll apply the reverse of the r sub 1 row operation, denoted r sub 1 inverse. And since r sub 1 just interchanged the first and third rows of the matrix, the reverse of that will just interchange those two rows again. So we'll just interchange the third and first rows of this matrix to give us this final matrix here, which is equal to A. So we get this sequence of three row operations going in the reverse direction where it starts with the matrix B and then ends up with the matrix A. So when we're thinking about two matrices being row equivalent, we won't ever have to worry about having a sequence that goes in one direction but not the other. So if we can find a sequence going in one direction that transforms the matrix A into the matrix B, then there's always going to be a sequence transforming B into A. Now for the rest of the video, I want to focus on how the notion of row equivalence of matrices relates to the notion of equivalence of linear systems. So I'm going to get rid of most of the stuff written here, and I'll just keep these two definitions here for our reference. Now we have this important statement that relates the notion of equivalence to the notion of row equivalence, and it's because of this statement that we'll eventually be able to solve linear systems entirely in matrix notation. So this statement says that if the augmented matrices of two linear systems are row equivalent, 
then the two linear systems are equivalent. Now we're going to prove this statement, but before we do that, we'll prove something slightly easier that will help us in our proof. So we'll first prove that applying any one of the three elementary row operations to the augmented matrix of some linear system results in the augmented matrix of an equivalent linear system. So consider this augmented matrix, which represents this arbitrary linear system S. Now let's apply a row operation of the first type by interchanging two rows of the matrix. And without loss of generality, let's assume that we interchange the first and second rows of the matrix. Then we would end up with this new augmented matrix here, which represents this new linear system, which we'll call S prime. Now we need to prove that these two linear systems, S and S prime, are equivalent. But notice that we can obtain S prime by interchanging the first and second equations of S. Now since interchanging two equations was one of the three operations for linear systems that we proved in an earlier video preserves the solution set, we know that S and S prime must have the same solution set. So S and S prime are equivalent. Now next we'll prove it for the second row operation. So we'll apply the second row operation to the matrix by multiplying the first row of this matrix by some non-zero constant C. And then this will give us this new matrix where this new matrix represents this new linear system which we'll again call S prime. Now just like before, we notice that we can obtain S prime by multiplying every term of the first equation of S by the constant C, where this is one of the three operations for linear systems that preserves the solution set. So this proves that S and S prime must be equivalent. Now lastly, for the third elementary row operation, let's apply the row operation to this augmented matrix by replacing the second row with the sum of itself and C times the first row for some constant C. Then we end up with this matrix, where this matrix represents this linear system. And now when we compare these two linear systems, we notice that we can obtain S prime by using the third type of operation for linear systems to replace the second equation of S by the sum of itself and C times the first equation. And again, since this is one of our three operations for linear systems that doesn't change the solution set, we know that these two systems must be equivalent. And so we've proved this statement for each of the three elementary row operations. Now we can start proving the main result that if two augmented matrices are row equivalent, then their corresponding linear systems are equivalent. So we'll start the proof by letting A and A prime be the augmented matrices representing the two arbitrary linear systems S and S prime respectively. And we'll assume that A and A prime are row equivalent, meaning that there exists a sequence represented here consisting of the elementary row operations R sub 1, R sub 2, all the way up to the R sub kth row operation, where this sequence of elementary row operations transforms the matrix A into the matrix A prime. So we start with the augmented matrix A which represents the linear system S and then we apply the first row operation R sub 1 to get some new augmented matrix, where this new augmented matrix represents this new linear system. Now since this R sub 1 is an elementary row operation, and since we proved earlier that applying an elementary row operation to the augmented matrix of a linear system results in the augmented matrix of an equivalent linear system, we conclude that these two systems are equivalent. Now we'll repeat the process, but this time starting with this augmented matrix, matrix, which represents this linear system. So starting from here, we'll apply the second row operation in the sequence, R sub 2, to this augmented matrix, and we'll get this new augmented matrix, which represents this new linear system. And now using this statement that we proved earlier in the video, we get that these two systems are equivalent since this R sub 2 here that we applied to this matrix was an elementary row operation. So these two are equivalent. Now we'll continue this process for each operation in the sequence where at each step we're getting a new linear system that has the same solution set as the previous linear system in the sequence, which really just means that it has the same solution set as S, since at each step in this sequence we're preserving the solution set. So each linear system that we get in this process will have the same solution set as the linear system S. Now once we get to the kth row operation, R sub k, this sequence will be complete, and so the resulting matrix that we get from this R sub k will be A prime, since we said that this sequence of elementary row operations operations transformed A into A prime. And then from here we can write down the system S prime, where A prime was the matrix representation of this system. And so now we conclude that S prime has the same solution set as S, since at each point in this process we didn't change the solution set, and therefore S prime and S are equivalent. And so that completes our proof. So now that we've proved this statement, we've shown that if two augmented matrices are row equivalent, then their two corresponding linear systems must be equivalent. 
But now what about the converse of this statement? Is it true that if two linear systems are equivalent, then their corresponding augmented matrices must be row equivalent? And unfortunately, the answer is no. The converse of this statement is not necessarily true. For a counterexample, consider these two linear systems, S and S prime, where S is the linear system consisting of the single equation, where the X sub 1 term has a zero coefficient and the constant on the right hand side is equal to 1, and then S prime is the linear system consisting of two equations, the first equation being the same equation as in the system S, and then the second equation, which just says that X sub 1 is equal to 1. Now notice that both of these systems have an empty solution set. For our first system S, you can see that there's no real number that we can plug in for our X sub 1 term, such that when multiplied by 0 will equal 1. So this system has no solutions. And then similarly, since this system has that same equation, S prime will also have no solutions. So both these linear systems will have an empty solution set. And so since they have the same solution set, these systems are equivalent. But now if you look at the augmented matrices of these two systems, you can see that they're not row equivalent. Since there's no row operation that we can apply to this matrix with one row to give us this matrix here with two rows. So these two augmented matrices are not row equivalent. And with that, I think it's a good stopping point. So I'm gonna end the video here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.